Doug Nelson Sr. was a state trooper here in South Dakota for 32 and a half years. He holds the record for longevity of service in the South Dakota Highway Patrol. And in looking at my own 23 and a half years, 26 to include the state legislature, I realized that dad could do 32 years, and I have got a lot of left work left in me. So today, my dad should not be with us, but I'm proud to wear the belt buckle that he wore for so many years. You hear a lot of these candidates say that they will fight for you. That they will go to PC and they will dissent from the corrupt culture that has evolved in Washington, D.C. You hear that a lot. They will fight for you. They will go to D.C. and they will change what's going on in Washington, D.C. They will dissent from that culture of corruption. But I'd ask you to look at those words and not, not so much listen to the words, but look at the actions that precede them. Look at my record, my record of service to you, the people of South Dakota in this great country. Look at my record in the legislature. I am the most concerned legislator in the legislature for the last three years. That being said, I'm proud to say I'm the least partisan. If you talk with my Democratic constituents, my independent constituents, my Democratic colleagues in the, in the state legislature, they will tell you that I've always treated them with respect, and I've supported issues that they've brought as passionately as mine when I can do so. And I am extremely proud today that I have friends here that are Democrats and Independents and Republicans. I take great pride in that. At the end of my time of service for you, the only thing that I want on my tombstone <coughs> and in the public's mind and the public's heart is that they remember me as someone who cared immensely for them, who cared for the state, who was willing to put his life on the line for you, and who always did what he thought was best for you, no one else, but for you, the public, that I've been proud to serve for these 26 years. Now, in regards to the other candidates, they claim they will go to D.C. to fight for you. Folks, for 237 years, this country has had enemies that want to see us dead. I am the only candidate that answered that call as an 18-year-old snot-nosed kid out of Mitchell when I joined the Marine Corps. The other candidates do not have that. They claim they will serve you, but now is the time when they're coming to serve you. I'd ask you to remember those warnings what is it about sunshine patriots, sunshine shoulders, soldiers? We hear these folks say that they will fight for you in D.C. But then in the next sentence, they brag about the fact that they have, they're expecting $3 million from that very people in D.C. that they said that they're going to go there to fight. Boy, they really got those people in D.C. so scared that they're giving them money to come there. These same politicians will tell you that they're going to go to D.C. and they're going to fight back against the leadership that's, that's leading this country so wrong. But then they point out how they've been so proficient in the South Dakota legislature and political scene by going along to get ahead with their fellow politicians here. As most of you folks know, my name has been spread across the newspapers here in South Dakota because I have refused to budge on matters of principle. <laughs> now we all want some, we all want a public servant to go to DC and dissent from that culture. Well folks, I'd like to ask you, for 237 <coughs> years, when this great country, when Congress needed someone to go abroad, and dissent from the evils of the Nazis, of the communists, of the terrorists. Did the call go out across America, send in the politicians? <laughs> no, it did not. The call went out for the professional dissenters, the ones America knew that she could always count on. 
They said, send in the Marines, send in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Coast Guard. But they did not say, Congress did not say, send us in. The last thing, folks, we need in D.C. is more professional politicians. No. Now, leading up to this decision to run, I received a lot of email and, and mail letters from people. They asked me to run, but a lot of people tell me that, you know, you can't take on this political machine that's been built in South Dakota the last 10 years. And folks, have no mistake, there is a political machine here in South Dakota. Now, a political machine is something like you see at Tammany Hall, or the daily political machine in Chicago. A political machine's sole purpose is to support those cogs in that political machine's machine. Its purpose is not for you, the voter. I'm a Marine. I do get scared of some things. Not a big fan of spiders. <laughs> but when it comes to the time my fellow countrymen have asked me to serve them, because they need someone in D.C. like this old Marine, straight-talking veteran, this proud South Dakotan, I heard that call. And it's something that stretched my heartstrings. <clears throat> Folks, I am the only candidate in this race that has the most important credentials for what you're going to be sending to the U.S. Senate. And mind you, this is a job application. The biggest portion of our budget every year is the defense budget. I have extensive credentials with the United States military, counterterrorism, counterintelligence, intelligence, law enforcement. I worked in the belly of the beast for 23 and a half years. I can tell you that our national defense budget is not always our national defense budget. There's a lot of things in that budget that's put in there, like military aid for Egypt. Folks, we have to cut our government. And we need someone who knows about national security and who knows about the military, and it's an expert in that area, to do so. I'm your man. <laughs> Folks, only in the recent history of this country have we the people allowed politicians to become that which is almost a cuss word in our American vernacular. Politician. Back in the good old days, you had public servants that answered a call to serve that would look the public in the eye and say, this is who I am, this is what I believe in, and this is how I will represent you. These candidates, one of them has been declared for a year. If I asked you folks and you had to tell me right now where they stand on an issue, you couldn't. One of these candidates has flip-flopped so many times on immigration, on taxing and spending, on, on everything that I don't even think they know where they stand on the issue. <laughs> now this candidate's brag that they're going to have $9 million to run for U.S. Senate seat in South Dakota. Folks, I do not need $9 million to run for the U.S. Senate seat in South Dakota. My record is loud and clear. I don't need to recreate it. I don't need to equivocate it. I don't need to hide from it. I need money to get out to the streets and meet the people, get my name out there, get that name recognition that I have here in this area, all across South Dakota, and let them know there's an actual conservative Republican running that will represent <coughs> all the people of South Dakota. something that you should demand out of every one of your candidates. I have prepared you a couple pages of the bare minimum of the issues where I stand on them. The 
is the contract with South Dakota. As your fellow countrymen seeking to serve you in your United States Senate, I propose not just a change in policies, but even more importantly, to help restore the bonds of trust of we the people with those who are supposed to be our faithful public servants. That is why, in this era of political evasion, equivocation, and posturing, I submit to you now a detailed commitment to rein in our federal government with no fine print. Next year's election offers a chance, after decades of politicians expanding government, to bring to Congress an actual public servant that will work to reduce a government that is too big, too intrusive, and too easy with your money. A public servant that will insist that Congress respects the rights of the people, our values, and the faith of the American family. Like President Abraham Lincoln, I will serve you with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right. I will set the example of how an honest public servant answers to, is loyal to, and serves to the public. I will help restore accountability to Congress and restore the standard of how the free people of this great nation should be able to live in freedom without fearing our government. This contract with you is aimed at restoring the faith and trust of you, the American people, with those who are supposed to serve you. Therefore, I, Stacy Victor Nelson, pledge to the taxpayers of South Dakota and to the American people that I will support only legislation that is constitutionally sound and which equally applies to all Americans, to include Congress. I will oppose any and all efforts to increase the marginal income tax rates for individuals and or businesses, and oppose any net reduction or elimination of deductions and credits unless matched dollar for dollar for, by further reducing tax rates. I will support the reduction of the income tax, review and reduction of other federal taxes, limit or reduce government spending, and I will support the rest of the South Dakota Republican Party platform. Except when related to a congressional authorization of force, I will consider all...